formal family law trial rule GR 40. Uh, that's the okay. documentation that I had previously forwarded to you. So okay. about informal trials. All right. And I'm just uh, on uh, Zoom uh, here in the courtroom so that if um, we need to confer separately, I'll ask Judge Evans to put us into a breakout room and then I'll take my laptop out into the conference room so we can just chat briefly if we need to. Okay, thank you so much. Uh -huh. uh, well, today is scheduled for an informal family law trial under General Rule 40. Before we began today, I handed out just a, a copy of the rule and then a brief summary sheet that uh, the Administrative Office of the Court had prepared. So if you have any questions, you can just refer to that. And if while we're in the process of the, the, the trial, if you need to refer to that, feel free to just pause and say, give me a second and feel free to review that. That's fine. Um, so as far as today's Pardon me. Today's issues that need to be need to be addressed. Um, my understanding is from review of the the file and all recent pleadings is that there's property to be distributed, debts to be distributed, and spousal maintenance is to be addressed, and attorney fees, and 2022 taxes, and also the home sale proceeds and distribution of the same. Kind of a rough estimate. I think that the 22 uh, taxes have already been. Uh, result. I believe both parties filed separately. Okay. Do you, do you agree with that, Mr. Stout? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So I'll cross that, cross that off the list. Um, anything to add to that list of the, the issues that are we're going to address today from either party? No. Okay. Mr. Stout, anything that I missed that you were thinking we were going to cover today? Hopefully that'll cover. Uh, I did hear uh, about um, Money issues. When you say your issues, which, which issues did, were, did, did you not hear? Oh, uh, as far as uh, the money, uh, spousal support. Okay, yeah, we, we will be talking about that. That's one of the issues that we'll be exploring is spousal support and then also distribution of, of property, you know, monies, bank accounts property, debts, and the like. So we'll, we will be covering that. So thanks thanks for emphasizing that. Um, as far as the um, case today, um, the informal trial rules are, are fairly, uh, there's there's no rules of evidence. So the rules of evidence don't apply. Uh, normally there'd be kind of a more formal setting. Um, basically, if you wanna put in some evidence, you can put in some evidence. There's not gonna be any barriers. Uh, so you can certainly do that. Um, so there won't be any any cross examination, so to speak. So each each of you, um, Mr. Stout and Ms. Stout, uh, will be able to speak and share your piece about what you think is important. Um, then there may be um, so there won't be any. You won't be able to ask Ms. Ms. Stout questions, and Ms. Stout won't be able to ask you questions. You can ask the court if if you want to ask a question, basically, or, and you can explore it that way. So if you have a question for Ms. Stout. Uh, you could inquire of me and say, "Hey, Judge, I'm interested in knowing more from Ms. Stout about topic X." And the same for Ms. Stout. Um, and then I, I, the court can ask you questions, each of you questions, to get a better idea of where, what your positions are. And so if you have any questions about um, why I'm asking you questions, uh, it's because I, I, there's, a, there's a legal standard and there's certain things that I need to know. And if I feel like I don't have a good grasp on it, then I'll ask you questions about it. Um, and then after you've heard from the other party, you'll both have an opportunity to respond and, and, add, and provide added perspective. So if somebody shares information that you feel is correct, you could emphasize, yeah, I think that's right. Or if you feel that what they've shared is not correct, then you could say, you can share that that's uh, your perspective that it's not correct. Um, and then the exhibits that have been admitted or will be admitted, um, um, they, I'll, I'll just give them what weight they're due. Um, so we'll leave it at that. And then we don't have any experts today, do we? No experts. No experts. Okay, do you agree with that, Mr. Doubt? You don't have any accountants or real estate appraisers or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so to go ahead and get started then, um, first off, any questions from the parties before we get started? Is Ms. McLean? No. Mr. Stout, do you have no, any questions? Sir. Okay. So the petition in this matter is Ms. Janet Stout. Thank you both. Yes. Appreciate that. All right. Um, before we get started, I just want to touch base with Ms. Um, Ms. McLean, any preliminary issues that you might have? Uh, the only thing that I would point out is that I had actually subpoenaed Leanne Whitcomb uh, for purposes of uh, obtaining the list and the financial documentation from the sale of the personal property. 
Um, Ms. Whitcomb did not uh, acknowledge or respond to my subpoena. Uh, the personal property is, uh, at least the photos that we have, uh, and some of the um, identification of the listings that Ms. Whitcomb had done online to sell the personal property before the uh, home sold are provided at exhibit tab number 27. And I guess uh, with that, I would just move to admit exhibits one through uh, 51 that have been provided uh, to both to the court clerk, uh, Your Honor, and to uh, Mr. Stout. All right, so Mr. Schacht, um, Ms. McLean is asking to admit exhibits one through 51, and that's the this, this series of documents. Did you get a copy of those 51 documents? Uh, yes, sir, and I did bring, I, I told you it was soaked, hmm. and I, I know there was some questioning in some of the tones, but I so I brought the proof that it was <laughs> got wet and uh so uh she could submit those i have no idea what happened to them to the material i was um for 60 days i didn't know who i was and all, all this transpired, and I knew nothing. And so she can submit all she wants. Okay. So, so those, those 51 exhibits, exhibits one through 51, uh, Ms. McLean's moving to admit those so the court can look at those, and, and that, that'll be considered evidence. Do you have, do you have any concerns if, if I review that and have the, all those exhibits admitted as evidence? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right, those are admitted. Mm -hmm. And just so the record uh, reflects it, if I may, it does appear that he has our tabbed documentation on the counter in front of him. I'm assuming that's the one through 51, because I can see the pink tabs, which would be consistent with what would be in your honors. I know for including our uh, statement of family financial status, uh, my attorney uh, fee certificate, and um, my proposed orders. Okay. Do you have all those documents, Mr. Stout? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll turn the time to Ms. Stout, Ms. McLean. So, and I guess that's a question for the court. Yeah. Uh, the rule indicates that uh, Your Honor is going to be asking questions. I didn't know if you wanted me to treat this somewhat like a settlement conference where we go through and just present the information to the court or how you want to do that. Yeah. And, and, and Mr. Stout probably, probably knows this, uh, but the GR40 is a fairly new rule. And so we're kind of filling out the contours and getting accustomed to it. Um, I, I'm, this, sometimes they call a bench that, or a judge that asks a lot of questions, a hot bench. It's cool in here. And so it's not going to be a hot bench today. Uh, so it's going to be a cool bench. In other words, um, I'll allow the parties to kind of lead the, lead the way. And so, then if I have questions, I'll, I'll, I'll raise them. Okay. So I'm, I'm fine if you want to approach it in that kind of a mandatory settlement conference fashion. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, Janet, um, uh, I'd like to just walk you through a little bit of the history and uh, go through our exhibits that we've provided for the court. So do you have all of those in front of you? Uh, yes, Okay. I do. And Janet, uh, is it accurate that you've been married for the last 34 years? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And can you just briefly uh, tell the court what your work history has been during the marriage? Uh, my work has, history has been uh, limited um, due to raising children and taking care of the home. So while I worked, I worked as a, just as a second job to help um, supplement income for the home. Um, I worked for the school district until COVID, and then I was laid off, and I've had several health issues since then. Okay, so what's currently going on as far as your health issues? I have uh, had six surgeries on my eyes in the last year, cataracts, YAGs, and retina surgeries on my eyes. So uh, seeing has been very difficult. Uh, doing daily activities has been difficult. I also have AFib tachycardia. Um, I also have uh, extreme anxiety, depression. And so I'm dealing with those also on a day-to-day -day basis. And you're currently scheduled to undergo an, a second retinal surgery? Surgery. 
And when yes, um, I go in on the 17th of July for the predetermination, and then the surgery would be scheduled uh, in August. Okay. And so um, one of the factors presented by this case is that technically you are currently covered by Mr. Stout's health insurance. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And that's through the FERS pension? That's uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. And as a result of that, um, the net amount that Mr. Stout currently receives uh, reflects a deduction to cover you on the health insurance. Yes, that's correct. And do you recall approximately that monthly amount? For the health insurance, um, I was told by David it was somewhere in the uh, range of $800. Okay. And so uh, right now we're here asking the court to grant a divorce decree. Uh, and if we enter divorce documentation immediately today following today's hearing, then you will not have that health insurance available for your upcoming surgery. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so are you asking the court to consider a potential delay in entry of those orders to allow you to finalize your eye surgeries? Um, yes, I'm asking the court if they could delay it until the 1st of uh, September so I can get that, that surgery done. Okay. And as a result of that surgery, um, am I correct that you have to lay face down for, what is it, two weeks to ensure that you don't have pressure on your eyes? That's correct. I have to uh, lay still. I have to lay upside down. I cannot um, shower. Um, I cannot, I have like five minutes that I can get up to use the restroom or to eat something. But other than that, I have to be very still. Um, I can't lift. I can't bend. Nothing. Okay. And you've already undergone one of these surgeries. Yes, I've had one of these surgeries. Okay. We've provided at um, exhibit one, your uh, social security earnings statement, which outlines the history of your earnings for your entire lifetime. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And it does show that you were not working uh, between 2013 and 2016. Um, why was that? Um, that I was not working at that time. I was taking care of the family and the home and the animals that we had had at that time. Okay. Which required um, round the clock treatment. Sure. What's your educational history? <clears throat> a high school um, diploma. Okay. Do you have any specialized training on the job since then? No. Okay. Um, and what were you doing at the school district? I was working in the nutritional services department. And that's here in Longview or Kelso? Uh, that would be in Kelso. Okay. And um, was that a full time position? No, it was not. It was four hours a day. Okay. Um, did you receive benefits as a result of that employment? Yes, they did. They did give us benefits. Okay. Um, ha do you have enough years um, working for the school district to qualify for a pension? No, I do not. Okay. Um, and so you don't have a benefit that will uh, benefit you uh, once your retirement age at this juncture? Okay. That's correct. I do not have that. Okay. What was your last employment? That was, that was my last employment, Kelso okay. School District Nutritional Services. Uh, and then did you also work um, very briefly for a golf course? Oh, I did work. Uh, I, that's when I tried to get a job and my eyesight, I could not do the job. I tried, but I could not do the job because I couldn't see. They had a computer screen that was very difficult, but I did work for a couple months there. Yes. That's reflected in your 2022 tax return. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's at exhibit two. It, you worked for JL Ward and it looks like for the year you grossed $1,219.50. That's correct. Okay. And you've not been able to work since then. That's correct. Okay. Um, talk to us about first about Mr. Stout's educational history. Um, Mr. Stout was in the Navy, in the nuclear uh, department of the Navy, and worked for Portland General Electric, and then went to work for the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. And um, does he have any college or just high school? Um, as, as far as I know, just a high school. Okay. And uh, he also worked for Trojan uh, Nuclear Planet for a period of time. Is that correct? That's correct. That would be the PGE, oh, that's the right. Portland General Electric. All right, and he does have a small pension that he's receiving uh, from PGE. That's correct. 
that's that $289 per month? That's correct. And um, that's a static pension. He doesn't receive any type of COLA increases for that pension. Uh, that's correct. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, how long did he work for the, um, uh, it just came out of my mind, uh, uh, Army Corps of Engineers? Oh, I don't recall the exact date that he started. It was right after Portland General Electric took down the nuclear power plants. Okay. And what did he do for the Army Corps of Engineers? Um, he was an engineer or a, um, excuse, excuse me, an operator. Okay. And um, uh, when did he retire? Uh, he, in 2018, he retired. Um, he was given the option to either be fired or to retire. Okay. And as a result of his employment, um, he not only has the PGE pension, but he also has a federal employee retirement systems pension. That's correct. Um, uh, I guess, has Mr. Uh, Stout uh, cooperated in updating discovery? No, he has not. Um, the most recent uh, documentation that we have with reference to his uh, first benefit, I believe is from 2020, is that correct? That's correct. And so we've had to um, calculate uh, the COLAs, the uh, cost of living increases or adjustments to those benefits based on the percentages that have been identified online for those pensions and the like, is that accurate? That's correct. Um, so at the time, uh, Currently, is it your understanding that he's grossing about $2,310 per month? On the uh, the first plan? On the first plan. That's correct. Okay. And it's from that plan then that there is a deduction for whatever he chooses for taxes as well as for your health insurance. That's correct. Okay. And just to clarify, do you say 2310 or 4310? 2310. Thanks. It's it anticipated gross. Um, so because we hadn't received updated discovery, um, I ended up subpoenaing Mr. Um, Stout's bank statements through Fiber. Is that correct? That's correct. And we had just received those. Those are uh, identified as Exhibit 51. That's correct. Okay. Um, Your Honor's already entered all of these, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, so these, uh, we were able to subpoena the August of 2022 through May of 2023 Fiber statements. And those show um, how much he's receiving. For example, if I go to the May 1st um, statement, page one, it's towards the very end of that packet. It shows that he's currently receiving from OPM, that it's OPM that provides his first pension. Is that correct? The Office of Personal that, Yes, that's correct. And that shows that he's getting a net currently of $1,274.86. That's correct. But we don't have any documentation, haven't received any documentation uh, despite request to show us what his current gross is. That's correct. Okay. Um, that same document also shows that he receives VA benefits um, and he, he currently receives $1,804.06 according to uh, this document. Um, and that's uh, just a little bit less than what we had calculated using the COLAs. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's not taxable, is it? Not that I am aware of. Okay, that you folks haven't reported those on your taxes during the last several years? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And in fact, he also received Social Security. That's correct. Um, has he provided updated uh, Social Security documentation to show what he's currently receiving on a monthly base, basis? No. Gross no. Okay. Um, are, do you currently qualify to receive your Social Security? No, I do not. Okay. Um, and you currently don't qualify for Medicare? That's correct. I do not. Okay. So you're going to have health insurance expenses uh, once this is done. That's correct. Okay. Um, and when, how old will you be in order to qualify for your full pen? I'm sorry, for your full social security. Uh, the full social security is 67. Okay. All right. My 67th birthday. Your 67th. Okay. Yeah. All right. And at that point, uh, based upon your social security earnings statement, uh, you'll qualify for $1,351 per month. That's correct. And how old are you currently? I am 61. 61, okay. Um, all right, uh, let's see. So as far as Mr. Uh, Stout's uh, social security, um, again, according to that documentation, he's currently uh, receiving uh, a net of 
3,047. That's, uh, it looks like it was deposited May 24th of 2023 was at least according to these records. Um, and we had calculated his gross social security at $3,211. Um, so once you take out Medicare expenses and whatever he's asking to withhold for taxes, that, that figure could be low. Yes, that is correct. All right. Um, are you, well, I guess let's talk about uh, finances since the two of you have been separated. Um, at the time of the temporary orders, um, the court took into consideration um, his earnings, your earnings from the school district. Were you working at the school district then? I was working at the school district, in, yes. Okay. In 2020. Okay. And when you worked at the school district, uh, your gross was about $689 a month? That's correct. Okay. Were you paid that year round? Yes, I was. It was uh, cut up into 12 months. Okay. All right. Um, so at the time of temporary orders, uh, the court had uh, allowed David to remain in the home. You folks separated. Uh, what was the date of your separation? That was uh, in September. Of 2020? 2020. And then we weren't in court until, I believe, February or March of 2021. 2021, correct. So um, for the period of time between September of 2020 and February of 2021, um, did David provide you with any direct financial support? No. Um, so where were you living? How, how have you been living since temporary, since prior to temporary orders and since temporary orders have been entered? I have been living between three different friends. Okay. Um, have they been charging you rent? They have not been charging me rent because I don't have the money to pay them. Okay. Uh, they have been taking care of my food on occasion. I will try to buy food with, uh, what I can. Okay. Um, uh, you have had some significant, uh, medical bills as a result of your ongoing medical issues. That's correct. Um, and so you're having to pay monthly uh, towards medical bills currently? That's that's correct. And you still have a vehicle payment, is that accurate? That's correct. Um, you've also incurred some credit card debt as well as personal loans from friends? That's correct. Okay. So if you take a look at page four of your statement of family financial status, uh, we've provided your anticipated um, monthly living expenses. That's correct. Uh, there's a number of these where your it's uh, the little two asterisks is either you're not paying or not paying in full, uh, and the three asterisks are ones that you currently are not paying. Um, That's correct. Which primarily is related to housing, housing and utilities. Have you what research have you done as it relates to housing? I have looked online. I have googled how much I have called places. I have and I have also asked friends what they pay. Okay, and so you've provided an anticipated rent of about eighteen hundred dollars per month. That's correct. Okay. And then you provided utilities based on the expectation that you're going to be in an apartment or a uh, rental home. That, that's absolutely correct. Uh, do you currently have any uh, resources? And I'm not talking about the house proceeds that are sitting in trust that we're asking the court to dispose of today, but do you currently have any uh, resources in order to obtain a rental? No, I do not. Um, have you talked to a prospective renter, a rental person about um, whether or not you would qualify since you currently don't have um uh, earnings or a job? I have called an apartment place and I will have to provide to them what I get monthly in order to qualify. Um, so at this point, I until this is all done, I won't be able to know for sure if I can get an apartment. Okay. Because okay. if I don't have the financials to back that, then they won't accept me. Okay. Um, and so under the temporary orders, you were awarded $1,900 per month. That's correct. Um, and has Mr. Stout been current or consistent in those payments to you? No, he has not. Okay. Um, in fact, does he is he currently a month behind? Yes, he is. Okay. And we've provided um, at uh, Exhibit 46, uh, the calculation of the temporary orders for the um, spousal maintenance that you were awarded of $1,900 per month, and then uh, provided the payments that you've actually received. And this is through uh, June of um, 2023. So that's correct. Yes. Did you receive a payment in June? I received a payment in June. Yes. Okay. Have you received a payment in July? Yes, I have re received a payment in July. Okay. So as of um, June 13, he owed you $1,900 because he's a month behind and $649.95 in accrued interest. That's correct. Uh, most recently, payments have been uh, relatively consistent. Why is that? 
uh, that is because they he originally was putting the money in my bank account and now it is going direct deposit. So it's going directly from the bank into my bank on the third of the month. And that's why it's been consistent. Okay. How long ago did that start though? That started in March. Of this year? Of this year. And you're asking that future, future spousal maintenance also uh, be by direct deposit? Yes. Okay. All right. Can I interject just a quick question? So the $1,900 with the June payment and the July payment, is Mr. Stout current or not, not current? He's Let's... still in the okay. okay. So if I'm looking at that exhibit 46, it says June 13th, no payment for June. No, actually, so I just payment. ran the interest from the date that we would have filed. So okay. um, it shows that the June June spousal maintenance of $1,900 and then a payment of $1,900. Okay. So it just doesn't show July. Okay, so, so then there would be a new obligation for July of 1900. So there's and the still date. owing the 19. Correct. Okay. Yes. And uh, for purposes of our balance sheet, our one page balance sheet, mm -hmm. that's under the analysis section. It's the very last line before or above the $111,933. So it's the $2,550 is the spousal maintenance and interest that's owed. So that's tab 46. Um, okay, so let's talk about, um, let's, uh, as far as your monthly living expenses, um, you, are you currently, well, you've identified about $300 per month for uninsured medical and dental expenses. Have you been able to pay all of that? Um, out of the $1,900, I am able to pay my obligation of the $300. Um, at this point, I can't have any dental work done in which I need because I don't have the, the money or the insurance to have that done. Okay. So the first insurance is it doesn't cover dental work. That's correct. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. And then your car payment is $387 per month? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you anticipate that your health insurance between now and when you would qualify for Medicare, which is what, another four years, is going to run you about $800 a month? Yes. Okay. That is what I had looked into uh, with the Blue Cross and the Blue Shield, which okay. is the insurance that I am current. I currently have. And so, so at age 65, she'll qualify? 65, she'll qualify 65. for Medicare. Okay, thanks. And then uh, there will be supplemental insurances that you'll be able to apply for as well at that point. Supplement yes. B or F or whatever. Yes, yes, correct. And those also would include dental and vision and prescriptions yes. if you need those. Okay. That's correct. Uh, Mr. Stout is currently living in an assisted living facility. Is that correct? That's correct. And is it your understanding that his room and board uh, is covered with one payment? Uh, from my understanding, his room, his board, his meals, and his uh, the uh, cleaning of the uh, the unit is all included in his okay. fee. So when I go back and look at Exhibit 51, it looks as though there's a grow capital place uh, payment that's consistent of $2,819.32. Is it? I'm, go ahead. No, it's go my ahead. understanding that's, that's where he's living. Okay. All right. And so um, that appears to be what his uh, payment is for housing, room, board. Food. Yeah. Okay. The utilities. All right. Okay. Um, so let's talk about then what your standard of living has been since the two of you separated. Very minimal. Um, I worry day to day how I'm going to even exist um, with the payments to the medical bills, with the payments to my loans, with the payments to my attorney. Um, it doesn't leave me with very much money at all. So buying new clothing, um, eating, recreation, there's nothing that I can do. Okay. Um, through this and this, the amount of stress that I've been under daily, just worrying about how I'm actually going to live day to day has caused hair loss, has caused weight loss, has caused my arrhythmias and my AFibs to be out of control. Okay. Um, ultimately, you're asking that the court um, provide for you and Mr. Stout equally on the finance, on finances. That's correct. Okay. Um, and so we've outlined at page uh, two and three, sort of the history of your folks' income, and this is in your statement of family financial status, uh, the history of your incomes. Uh, page three um, provides for what currently uh, is in receipt. And you're ultimately, you're asking to be awarded 50% of the first pension, is that correct? That's correct. 
and uh, you retained the services of Drew Hornstein to prepare the um, court ordered, court let's ordered, see. let's see, uh, I can't remember what COPE stands for. Uh, court ordered acceptable for processing to divide benefits under the federal employee retirement system. You retained That's, services to do yes. that? Yes, I, I paid and retained for her services to do that. And uh, do you recall what you paid Drew for her services to prepare that order? I believe that is $1,000. Okay. And we produced uh, what documentation we had received at the commencement of this case back in 2021 to her in order to prepare for that. Well, which was correct, based on the 2021, correct? Yes. And so just so the court is aware, uh, the COPE provides for a 50-50 division of the federal uh, pension. Um, it provides for uh, Ms. Stout to be named the survivor uh, beneficiary to that. Um, and it also provides for the ongoing of her being listed, I believe, as the beneficiary to the life insurance. Uh, there is a, I think it's a $95,000 life insurance that's affiliated with the pension. Uh, and we're asking not only through the COPE, but also through the decree that requires Mr. Um, Stout to maintain my client as uh, the beneficiary, sole beneficiary on that insurance, um, because that will ensure her ongoing support after, the, uh, after he passes. Uh, of course, the expectation, he's older than she is uh, with life expectancy. The expectation is that he would normally be the one to free to seek. Um, so we're just asking to provide for some ongoing benefit to her. Um, also, uh, <laughs> the federal government is very slow to work. And um, I can tell the court uh, that my experience, and I talked to Ms. Hornstein about this, um, it can take uh, several years before the federal government will actually affect a COPE. Um, and so there is language that we're proposing in the final orders that require Mr. Stout to pay to Ms. Stout um, her 50% of the gross amount of the pension until the first co order kicks in. Um, and if the court takes a look at uh, my proposed orders under tab number three, yeah, page six of the decree, uh, you have the language about interim payments. And so um, the request is that we provide those payments to her directly until uh, the Fed, federal government actually affects the order. Okay. So uh, in that circumstance, then Janet, assuming that the that our uh, assumption is or our calculations are correct that the first pension is about twenty three hundred and ten per month gross, uh, then you're asking that we pay you fifty percent of that, which is one thousand one hundred and fifty five dollars. That's as correct. Well, as well as spousal maintenance of $2,319. That's correct. And, and with that, that would equalize your incomes, but that also takes into consideration this almost $700 per month of income that you currently don't have. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, if that wasn't taken into consideration, if the court uh, puts you at zero, which is what you've currently been, then the whole transfer payment, instead of being $3,474 for both your share of FERS and spousal maintenance, it would be $3,819 to equalize your incomes. That's correct. And do you think that that's fair and appropriate given the length of the marriage and the um, financial position that both of you are currently in? Yes, I do. I believe that is. Okay. Um, you're asking that at uh, your age 67, when you qualify for your full social security, then his spousal maintenance would be reduced by 50% uh, of the uh, expected gross Social Security that you're going to receive. That's correct. And so starting uh, November 1 of 2028, uh, spousal maintenance would reduce from $2,319 down to $1,988 per month. That's correct. And you're asking that that be paid for the rest of your life. That's correct. Okay. Um, uh, also, just as an aside, uh, the FEGLI insurance, that life insurance, is $67.45 per month for Mr. Stout to maintain that. And that's for life insurance, correct? That's well. The ninety-five thousand dollars base. Correct. Um, let's turn uh, to property. Um, so originally, um, at the time of temporary orders, uh, you were uh, ordered to receive nineteen hundred dollars per month. Uh, that's correct. So that's significantly different than what you are asking for um, today. That's correct. And significantly different than what you were asking for at the time of temporary orders. That's correct. Um, are you asking the court to take a look at the um, financial inequities um, that you have been living under since those temporary orders were entered and to provide for an equalization of your incomes retroactive to when this case was filed? Yes, I am. And if the court were to do that, 
um, and provide for that difference in the maintenance between March of 2021 and July of 2023. That would be an additional $45,646. That's correct. Okay. Um, and just for the court's information, uh, that calculation and information is on page six of her statement of family financial status. Um, under the temporary orders, uh, David was allowed to remain in the home and he was ordered to pay the mortgage and utilities associated with the home. Is that correct? That's correct. And originally it was believed and understood that David was going to keep the home rather than the two of you sell that. That's correct. Uh, did you uh, retain the services of a real estate broker to value uh, the home before it became known that it was going to be sold? Yes, I did. Um, and uh, how much did you end up paying Hal Palmer? Um, $650. And that was to perform his valuation of broker opinion of the home? That's correct. And that was produced through discovery? Yes, that's correct. And then uh, ultimately it was determined that the house would be sold uh, and the house has sold. That's correct. Um, and to turn your attention to um, exhibits so the exhibits 13 and 14. So exhibit 13, this is the um, settlement closing statement for the sale of the home on November 9 of 2022. That's correct. And the home sold for $390,000. That's correct. And if you turn to page two of that document under number 13, um, there were some additional expenses that were incurred because of the condition of the home as well as uh, for unpaid utilities. That's correct. Uh, so talk about the condition of the home and why there was $4,040 and 78 cents in new flooring expenses. Well, I, when I lived in the home, the house was in great repair, was well, in great repair. Um, I did all the inside and the outside as well as that part-time job. Uh, so once I had moved out, I don't know what had happened. I don't know how he cleaned, if he cleaned. Um, I do know that when I was there, he um, urinated in bottles. Uh, he left those laying around the floor. Um, I regularly shampooed. I regularly vacuumed, dusted, and cleaned the house, uh, as well as the laundry and the cooking. I also did the outside work um, from the back the backyard and the front yard. Um, I would go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, he was asleep when I got home. He was still asleep at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm assuming that after I left, still nothing was done within the house. I don't know why the carpeting and the flooring had to be replaced. Um, I'm just, my understanding or what I would assume from that is it just wasn't kept up. The home was not kept up after I left. Okay. Uh, did Ms. Joma talk to you? Ms. Joma was the real estate agent. Yes, correct. And did she talk to you about the um, odor and the um, urine that was within the household? Um, yes. And she was recommending that the carpets be replaced. Replaced, correct. And so as a result of that, you folks incurred $4,040.78 in those expenses? That's correct. Ms. Jolma fronted those expenses for you? And yes, she did. She was reimbursed from the home sale proceeds? That's correct. And that's supported by the documentation also under tab 13? That's correct. Okay. Um, it also shows on page two of Exhibit 13 that um, the Beacon Hill Sewer District, there was a payment of $442.84. That's correct. Is that a utility bill that Mr. Um, Stout was to pay under the temporary orders? That is correct. I was not living in the house at the time, so that would have been his utility bills. But the utility bill was in my name because when we had moved to Longview, I everything was placed in my name. So Therefore, even though he, I was no longer living in the house, they would not put that into his name. They kept it in my name. So it was my responsibility to pay. Okay. Um, but he, he actually paid it under the temporary orders. Um, he paid some of them under the temporary orders. The phone bill, he did not pay. Um, I had to borrow money uh, from a friend to get that paid in order to get him off of the plan. Okay. And that documentation, as far as the phone bill, um, he was ordered to pay to segregate your phones. Yes, he was ordered to segregate and pay his part and my half, and that did not happen. Okay, so we provided at Exhibit 30 uh, the documentation that shows what was paid, and then you actually, a friend of yours, uh, fronted you the money for that. That's correct. And so there's uh, blacked out portions of your friend's uh, credit card record showing that payment. That's correct. Okay, so are you asking for the court to enter findings of waste as it relates to the Beacon Hill utility payment that was not paid? to the uh, phone bill that was not segregated um, and for the carpet work uh, that's outlined that, here. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, in addition, um, Mr. Um, Stout was ordered to pay the mortgage payments. That's correct. 
Um, and he was uh, two months behind on mortgage payments at the time that the home sold. Is that correct? That's correct. So if you turn to page 11 of our statement of family financial status, uh, we talk about um, the Shell Point mortgage. Um, and tab uh, 36 or exhibit 36 is the history of uh, payments. Uh, and based on the review of those payments, there were late fees uh, incurred and uh, Mr. Stout was two months behind. Is that your understanding? That's correct. I obtained those records. That's correct. Okay. And those total um, $5,180 uh, that was additional payments that had to be made uh, from escrow that would have increased the net monies uh, sitting in my trust account from the home had he provided those payments. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, in addition, the court ordered Mr. Stout to make his best efforts to pay the HELOC. Uh, the two of you had a specialized loan services home equity line of credit. That's correct. Um, historically, had Mr. Stout made payments on that debt? Uh, no, he had not. Uh, did he make any payments towards the HELOC? Uh, since your separation and under the temporary order? No, he has not. Okay. Um, are you asking that the court enter a finding of waste for the late fees that have continued to accrue because he's he made no effort towards those payments? Yes, I am. And those total $4,565? That's correct. And we've provided the um, HELOC documentation at Exhibit 37? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so currently, uh, sitting in my trust account, there is one hundred twenty-three thousand five hundred eighty-seven dollars and ninety-nine cents uh, to be distributed as the court deems appropriate. That's correct. And what are you asking the court to do? Um, I'm basically asking the court to, in my opinion, David is right side up at this time, and I'm very upside down, and I'm just asking the court to make us whole, um, so that we're both in the same situation. Um, so I am asking the court to award me $111,933 to make me whole on all the above on the analysis sheet. Okay. And then to award me the spousal maintenance and um, the FERS. Okay. Um, you have also incurred attorney's fees in this case. Is that I have incurred, yes, I have. I have incurred attorney fees. Um, I tried to do this with Mr. Stout, David Stout, and he did not. So I had to hire an attorney to help me um, get through the um, financial end, and which is you. So yes, I've been, I've incurred attorney fees of twenty four thousand right now. Um, I'm sure that they're probably going to be higher than that. I anticipate them to be around thirty thousand. And how have you been able to pay those? I've had had to ask a friend. Um, so I have a loan out through a friend for fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, excuse me, uh, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. I'm also making payments to you of four hundred dollars every month out of that nineteen hundred dollars that I'm getting. So when uh, we provided um, Ed Sher Edward Sherrier. Yes. Uh, and you've had several promissory notes that you've signed for him. That's correct. And those total $19,599. That's correct. And those are, we provided those at exhibit 33. So are you asking that Mr. Stout provide a contribution towards your attorney's fees? Yes, I am asking that. Um, I believe he has the means to do that. Okay. Um, in regards to attorney's fees, what are you requesting? I'm, a, I'm requesting at least 15000 Okay. All right. At the bare minimum. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that Your Honor has read through our statement of family financial status and perused. So yeah, I, I've looked through all this. I've tried to provide sort of a roadmap as far as the different tabs that support the documentation. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, if there's anything else that you, I, I don't want to get, I, I guess uh, I probably the one thing you'd want us to get into would be the personal property. Uh, because the personal property, as far as the balance sheet, uh, so Janet, uh, tell the court what you what you have as far as personal property following your separation. All I have is the clothes on my back and what I could put into my Kona car. I have no furniture. Um, I have no appliances. All I have is clothing. Okay. Um, and uh, at the time, so and you just have the one vehicle. That's correct. I could not take any property because I couldn't afford a storage unit uh, to put that in. So I had to leave all my belongings behind. Okay. And uh, Mr. Um, Stout has, well, at the time of separation, had four other vehicles. Uh, that I'm aware of. Yes, that's correct. Um, during this court process, there was an allegation that you sold, I think it was the Toyota 4Runner and two of the vehicles. He, there was a suggestion, an allegation that you sold two of the vehicles. Uh, that's correct. 
which which vehicles was it that they were suggesting that be sold? It was the uh, it was the four it was the uh, pickup the Toyota pickup Tacoma. and it and, yeah the Tacoma and it was the Corolla and the Corolla I or think- the Kia. The, excuse me, uh, the Kia. Oh, the Kia. He has he has the Corolla and the Forerunner, so it would have been the Tacoma and it would have been the Kia. Did you sell those vehicles? No, I did not. Were those vehicles in your name? No, they were not. Okay. Um, and so, what's your understanding as far as what happened to those vehicles? My understanding is, um, I was totally unaware of the estate sale that was happening at the home. Um, my son was; he was appointed guardian uh, for the home sale because David was in the hospital. Uh, Lauren called me and said, there's some guy that wants these cars. And I said, well, they're awarded to David. I can't do anything about it. Um, and he said, well, they have to be moved because they're selling and signing the home and they can't be left in the driveway. Um, I called the DMV and I told Lauren I would see if I could get the titles for him. And that is when I found out I was not even on the titles of either vehicle. So there's no way that I could get the titles and there's no way that I can sell or give away those vehicles because I did not have the title and it was not in my name. So I told Lauren that and he contacted a gentleman um, at NIP or Chad or something to that regard. But I know that Lauren had talked to him about those vehicles since Lauren was the guardian at Lightham to remove and to sell the home. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned that you knew nothing about the estate sale. Um, I knew nothing about the estate sale. And we've provided at Exhibit 27 um, the documentation or screenshots of what was being advertised of your personal property being sold. Is that correct? That's correct. And I received that information from a friend who had drove by and had seen there was a sale at my home. Okay. And I was contacted and I knew nothing about that. Okay. Um, Is that different than the estate sale that her son was involved with? It's the same. Same thing. So... uh, when you go back and look at the court record, there we had to appoint a guardian uh, to actually find the documentation in Mr. Uh, Stout's absence because Mr. Stout was in the hospital. And um, so the son was appointed solely for purposes of being able to conclude the residence sale, the sale of the home. The home, actual physical home, okay. Um, and to close it. Okay. And so we did that so that we could get the home sold. Okay. Um, but as far as the personal property items, um, again, uh, this Leanne Whitcomb, posted all of this, that she was running the sale from the house. Uh, we obtained the screenshots from Janet's friend um, and have no accounting of how much was received, um, what happened to those proceeds, what happened to the vehicles. So Janet's provided in her court aid, the um, itemized listing of assets with what she believes they could have been sold for the garage sale. And you see some of these, uh, for example, you know, the G upright freezer, it says it's sold for 175. Another, um, I don't know if this is the same one or a different one sold for 175. There was an air purification system. There were truck sidebars and running boards that sold for $100. There were brand new tires that sold for $500. There was uh, shelves that sold for $175. A mini fridge that sold for $35. A dining room table that sold for $50. Um, And when you go through these, I mean, this is a distress sale because they need to get everything out of there so that they can get this home turned over to the new owner. So that's the potential concern, and we don't have any documentation from it. The assumption is that Mr. Stout received those money. But I, uh, as I said, I don't have proof of how much they received or where those proceeds. Did you want to add anything else to that? Uh, no, that's that's all I know of on that. I don't know what happened to any of that. Um, when uh, this started and I had to give a, a listing of what was in the home, I gave a listing of room by room what I what I remember that was in the home when I left. After I left, I don't know if he gave away sold items. Um, I, I'm, I'm unaware. I'm only aware of what the items were when I left the home. And I gave them a value of what a garage sale, you know, would be okay. on those items. But those items were all in the home when I left. So. Okay. Um, focus. Or uh, have you ever received a uh, certified healthcare? So, Mr. Sutter, are you asking a question? Certification. So, are, is so Janet. yeah. Oh, so what, one of the key points of this GR40 rule, this informal family law trials, is that you can't ask her questions. You cannot ask her questions. You can ask me to ask her a question. And if I think that's oh, okay. something relevant, I can delve into that. Otherwise, you just tell me and share what you feel is most important and what I, and what I need to focus on from your uh, position and vantage point. Okay. Um, well, let me begin uh, kind of 
to go from the back forward. Approximately November 7th, 2022, I stopped at the yard sale in mid-afternoon at the sale. I purchased a few odds and ends, noticed two vehicles on the property. I asked the status of the vehicles and if they were for sale. People working in the yard sale provided the phone number, which is 360-562, I believe is uh, Janice Stouts. I indicated that I would need to speak with her uh, with regarding the vehicles. We spoke by phone and she indicated that she would give me the Toyota pickup and the Kia Rio as long as both were moved from the property ASAP as it uh, was a pending sale at the time she indicated via text that she would provide the titles to both vehicles approximately one week later throughout the day and early in the next day I worked to remove the vehicles and brought them to his house. Over the next several days, she indicated that she was not able to obtain the titles and that I uh, speak with her son. I reached out and indicated that once the owner, the father who had been hospitalized uh, was available, he would make a plan giving me the titles. Signed and dated. Uh, you're viewing, sir. Do you, want, do you want me to look at that? Yes, sir. In the 2021 tax returns, here is a uh, copy uh, for Care Direct USA. It's, uh, I believe, at that time, Judge, the uh, uh, Janet was self employed as a uh, healthcare worker. Uh, I believe she had a, was a certified healthcare worker in addition to uh, uh, working at uh, the school. Uh, and I believe she also, prior to that, was office manager and dental offices and whatnot. I believe she also had an expanded function uh, uh, certifications and everything. Uh, as far as the house, I paid $200 a month for uh, yard care and outside maintenance. Uh, the uh, We had uh, three Akitas. One had uh, yeah, just excuse me. In the wreck, I lost part of my brain power. Um, she had uh, uh, urinary problems for three years. Two of the Akitas had grand mal seizures, which would cause urination and uh, excrement onto the carpets and everything. True, I did have. Uh, urine bottle due to the fact that uh, I did have a cyst on the spine and I had back problems. Uh, the bed, I was, uh, I was told to sleep down stairs, take care of the dogs because the wife needed sleep and she was didn't want to be bothered by the dog. I couldn't get up. And at my age, yeah, you when I had to urinate, you done right. It was either that or so I did have a problem. Um, but the three large dogs and a 20-year-old carpet might have had something to do with it. Just guessing. I was uh cognizant up to the point uh the house was to be sold. Uh, the lady that took care of the uh, or that did the yard sale uh, she approached me said clean the house which we did uh, at that time uh, my lawyer contacted uh, Janet and told her to get her stuff out of the house. And she says, 
What do you want me to remove? She said she did not want anything. And that was told to Nancy Little and Susan Chamberlain, her sisters. Uh, let's see, the second mortgage, uh, which she says I had nothing to do with, or that she had nothing to do with. She bought a forerunner when I was serving over in Iraq with that uh, second mortgage. And she was in charge of all the bills because I couldn't handle it. I just, it was so far gone. I, I, I couldn't handle it. And uh, when she left, she was basically nine years behind in payments. And I just, I can, can I ask you a question about that? You said so it, it, nine years behind on the HELOC. So the HELOC had, had not been paid for nine years. Right. Did, the, did the financial institution contact you all and say, hey, you're a little bit behind, like nine years behind? And, yes. Okay. They traded hands and whatnot. I, we bet, went bankrupt and I went over the deep end. I, I couldn't handle it. I could not handle, she handled all the bills. And when she left, I contacted them. They said, when we sell it, you'll get your money. And uh, that was the intent. When Janet walked out, uh, she says, you can live here until the dogs die. And their seizures got to the point where they didn't know who they were, so I had to put them down. And at that point, we sold the house. So it was anticipated from the beginning to sell the house. It was never for me to live there. Um, Beacon Hill, I received a refund as I overpaid when I moved out. I paid religiously the first of every month. The electric bill, I paid religiously first of every month. Just like Janet, my son would pay. And for a long time, he took the money out of my account and would have it paid because uh, I would get uh, notice from my lawyer saying I was behind. And I'm not. The judge originally, she asked for two months back support, and I did. And it was at the end of the month. So instead of paying at the first of the month, I pay at the end of the month. She has to live for those 30 days for, to get paid. It's kind of a work. That's my thinking. So I'm not a, a month behind. She wants paid we're not living or, you know, I say she has to live to get paid. If you understand my reasoning, instead of paying it first of the month. So uh, that's my deal. The phone, you'll look on uh, my previous, or the lawyers uh, metal to the court. They were, uh, I did, I caught it up and got rid of it and she owned it, but I had to pay to get a zero balance. And I was, uh, one of the problems that she, uh, Janet bought a new phone. Now, like me, I bought a $50 phone when I had the wreck. We replaced the one I had, but she bought a, an expensive $1,000 one be dang if I was gonna pay for her phone. And she was streaming movies to these other numbers, which were the places that she was living. And I showed the lawyer that. And let's see. I have no problems maintaining health care. I have no problems paying half of Social Security. 
half of uh, BGE and half and half of uh, OPM. And I'll be happy to maintain our life insurance, however much it's. I, I don't know how much it is, and I've maintained that. Uh, Can I just go back when you said healthcare? You said you have no problem maintaining it. Healthcare meaning the. What do you mean by healthcare? Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's see, I pay to maintain that. So, uh, and they pay, they pay wonderful. And if she has health problems, you know, uh, she isn't going to get any better care than that. So is that the is that the monthly premium of about eight hundred dollars that was mentioned before? That I pay, yes. That you're paying, okay. And you said you you would continue to pay that, or no? Yeah. Okay. But she, you know, said she doesn't want that. I have maintained her car insurance since they, because the previous judge said maintain insurance. Well, my lawyer said that's. All insurance. It means health care and car insurance. So I have to pay her car insurance too. Well, I have letters here that she isn't paying her uh, uh, Honda or the, the car Honda, bill. The Kona. And uh, they threatened to uh, close my account because of her delinquency. If I would like it stipulated that I will pay her car, but that that comes off of her spousal support. As far as the VA in the Washington is supposed to be, if you have a marriage and it's dissolved and argued for a long time, uh, she should receive half. I have no problem with that. For the top, for the jobs that she was married with me or that I had while being married, the VA, that's totally separate. She had, I was awarded that uh, previous to our marriage and she should get none of that. And that is, I uh, talked to the VA and they're fine with that. And one of the problems that I have with uh, Noel and uh, Janet, they don't consider uh, uh, taxes. I had to pay, I, have, I had to go get a loan I had to uh, pay an additional $6,500 in taxes uh, this year. And for, for tax year 2022. Say again? For tax year 2022. Yes. And the tax difference between married and single or married and divorced will cause me an additional. $4,500. Yeah, I mean, you can look that up on the 1040. They say I make $68,000 a year. Well, that's before taxes. So I want you to consider my tax bill on my uh, income or lack thereof. Uh, because I don't know uh, if you look at all the statements, all the bills that were paid out of the accounts, was money that I owned, not the janitor. Janet never uh, put money into the account. She had her money and then we had mine. And yes, 
I was behind on, I did get caught up on the house. Uh, we had a uh, account at Bank America. And if you look, I had a deposit in 20, in October 2020, and it was for like $1,600. And that was a payment in addition to my uh, normal VA. And Janet spent it on uh, it was uh, uh, clothes, um, or some negligee shop. I can't remember. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the record showed Victoria's Secret. Anyway, so I thought I had money in the account, and I asked her if she paid the account for her house. And she said, yes, I did. Well, that check bounced. And you can see it on, on the, uh, so November, December, when I started taking that and everything was caught up. And then uh, like say, when I had my accident, I couldn't pay. I, I didn't know who I was for two months. And that's why my son, <laughs> Uh, inter or was appointed by the court uh, to do my uh, work and everything. And I mean, here, here, here's uh, a statement from uh, the IRS to kind of give you a clue. Uh, I thought I had files, and I didn't. I was 30 days late. And <laughs> uh, here's how the amount that uh, I owed and uh, had to get a loan on. Uh, also, one of the things that wasn't listed is uh, Janet's bank account at Land and Sea Credit Union over in uh, Rainier. Because I know when we went down to buy the car and uh, she didn't put any money or she said she, she had several thousand dollars put down. We didn't put down anything because my credit was good or good enough. And uh, that's where I suppose she kept that money as well as her uh, uh <clears throat> money that uh, she put her paychecks in, I don't know. Uh, as far as the 120 some thousand, it should be by Washington law, 50-50. Uh, you know, and as far as the household goods, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, nothing other than uh, at the time when we were showing the house, everything was out in the garage. We put everything out. And a lot of the, or uh, my son lives in Seattle and he sold it or had this lady get rid of it. And at the time when we were between uh, showing the house and selling the house, she says, I will uh, come in and do it on a commission. And I said, no, I said, I'll, I'll pay you what, for a job. And uh, so 
she contacted my son when I was in uh, um, the hospital and said uh, that she'd have this garage sale and he says, get rid of it. We got to get rid of it. Court order. And he, he went back to work. We saw none of it. That was all, all her profit for her work. Uh, I looked at some of the uh, things that were in there. Some of those are ours. I mean, she evidently does this for a business and brought in other stuff that, were, that wasn't even ours for the sale. And uh, so, so all of her services consumed all of the monies that were earned from the sale of the proceeds. So zero dollars went to, to you. I, I, I had zero. I got zero. My son got zero. She did all the work, and I uh, was gonna. I asked my son about it, and he says, "When you get to feeling better, Dad, I'll, I'll fill you in." And I've never asked him about it because it's water under the bridge. I have two sea bags full of clothes. This is my furnishings in my apartment and I have a TV. That's all I got out of my household goods. Do you have any idea what the total sell amount or dollar amounts I have were no raised? Idea. Did, you, did you ever talk to your son about how much was? He has no idea. He said a lot of it went, went to the garbage. Okay. Uh, you know, like say, uh, all the Janet stuff, she said she didn't want anything. And she told her sisters that. And I know some of the things were just given away. And Ms. Whitcomb did that? Huh? Ms. Whitcomb, she was the one that was in charge of the cell. Did, was she giving things away? The, the, the woman the woman that was in charge of, of moving the household items, getting them out, selling them, did she give items away? Did she throw items away? No. When uh, there were some of the neighbors, I guess they wanted some of the stuff, and they took stuff. Uh, some of my sister or Janet's sisters, they took some stuff. Uh, but I, I don't know what happened to it, sir. Okay. And I really don't care. <laughs> it was one of the, it, it was just a bad part of history, and I just soon forget about it. I know I I can't do anything about it. Like I went to the cops for Janet uh, selling my cars, and they said, "Well, we aren't going to do anything about it." Uh, senior citizens. Uh, would not do anything about it. They said, go to the cops. Uh, they investigated uh, uh, my son taking advantage of me for because they thought uh, he had my bank account and was selling all this stuff and they investigated him. And there wasn't anything you know, uh, that they could find that he did wrong or malicious. And uh, he was put in a position that he shouldn't have been put in. And I can't fault him. He was just trying to do the best he could. So Somebody said, well, you ought to fault your son. And I can't. Uh, but he never received any money, he said, and I never received any money. And uh, the council seems to think I did. And I didn't. Okay. You had a list that you were looking at, Jeff, other, other items that you wanted to tell me about? Um, no. It's just that I would like you to um, consider 
uh, what I said about the income tax and the VA, other than that, you know, that's, uh, and I realize, you know, I, I feel the legal system has, I, I picked the wrong lawyer. A lawyer was, uh, this barred, um, and I talked to the uh, legal clerks here or the clerks for the court and said, hey, you know, what do I do? Who do you recommend? And I felt that the court ought to appoint a lawyer for me because Janet had counsel, I did not, to make everything legal. But I I invested uh, money in legal counsel and here I sit. <laughs> uh, how, how much did you pay Ms. Blondin? I think it was $6,000. Uh, I went to other, uh, and nobody had touched it. Nobody wanted, and uh, you know, this was April, and we were quarantined. I had my broken back, and quarantined for uh, COVID, and uh, really couldn't get out and talk to anybody, and the legal system here is so swamped to try to get a a uh, council or retain a council it, it's pretty tough <laughs> especially under those circumstances so where you're several years in and you know I I was hoping for a arbitrator on the merits of being a gambler, you're both judges. And uh, if I had to pay her legal cost, I'd be money ahead with an arbitrator. So, uh, but communications were such that, you know, didn't happen and uh so i would rather had counsel sitting here but uh didn't work out other other important issues uh, that you feel that you want to cover or may not have covered at this point no okay all right so i'll turn the time to to, to miss Claim. The only thing that I would ask you as yeah. part of uh, Mr. Stagnant is relative to his income with TLC wheelchairs. Uh, we have requested uh, documentation from his employment. Uh, we did not get pay stubs or wage information uh, from that employment. Uh, however, uh, in the accident uh, report, which is provided at um, tab 12, it was outlined that he was employed with TLC wheelchair services at the time of his accident. And then also when you take a look at uh, tab 51 for um, fiber, um, bless you, okay. the fiber uh, credit union statements, you also see um, deposits from that employment. Um, he comments about the uh, owing taxes for 2022. Um, his VA would not be taxed. Um, uh, at least the documentation that we have shows that he was withholding some monies towards taxes on his uh, FERS and I assume also on social security. Um, I don't know what his withholding arrangement was or if he was a 1099 employee or an actual W-2 employee with TLC and whether or not the eight or 9,000 that was owed um, was based on whatever his employment structure was with TLC. I, I can't answer that for you because I haven't been provided those documents. Um, I would acknowledge that um, until the FERS uh, pension 
actually uh, is um, paid over to Janet. If you identify that as spousal maintenance, he would be paying the tax on spousal maintenance. Uh, I, I can go back and look. We could always provide it. And I think, uh, I'm sure the Coke order provides that she's to pay tax on her 50% of the first that she receives. Um, we could certainly provide for that within um, the uh, final order as well, as far as those interim payments, because those are just him forwarding her property where she'd have to claim that 50%. So uh, only the tax, only the spousal maintenance would be non-taxable to her under the current law and taxable to him. Um, but at this juncture, I don't know, one, I don't know how much the court would be ordering on that. And I have no basis to know whether or not that 22 taxes was from his employment. Um, so those would be questions that I would uh, want to know. And then uh, his offer to continue to cover her on the health insurance through FERS. Um, I have received nothing through discovery as it relates to COBRA, uh, the availability for COBRA under that FERS policy, the amount that the payment would be, but historically COBRA payments would run up to 36 months following a divorce. And typically COBRA payments are more expensive than the base pay for insurances, but I can't tell the court what those figures are, if it's even available. Um, so that's a conundrum. Um, Your Honor. Yeah, go, Ms. Stone. Um, I did check on those and that is not available. The COBRA is not available um, on the insurance. Uh, and even on the insurance, I would hope to be able to get back to work. So at which time I can get, you know, cover my own insurance through my own plan. Okay. So Mr. Tut, um, Ms. McLean raised a question. I think it's a valid, a fair question related to uh, the TLC wheelchair company. Apparently you were driving and that's when the accident occurred. Yes, sir. How, how long had you been working for that company? Um, I started in May of 22 and went up through in 21, 22. Okay. Was that the date of the accident? Yes, sir. Okay. And they paid, uh, they were paid uh, wages up through March and they no longer pay it anymore. I'm, so they, so you, you received income through them from until March of 2023? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that because of the accident and there was? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And what? What, do they pay you? How do they pay you? Do they give you like an hourly wage or do they give you a salary? How do $15. They... Well, it was based on an hourly wage, but it was a, a, a real weird deal. Uh, if I didn't have a client or I had to have a client in order to be paid. So, uh, you know, I might have eight or nine rides for that day. And uh, there might be a two hour gap or an hour gap between rides. I wouldn't get paid for that. So in a, I had 12 hour days that I'd only get paid for. Okay. And then on like an average, average week or average month, what would be kind of your average income over that, you know, from May until October, what would be kind of an average Paycheck from about two thousand dollars. About two thousand. Okay. And was that? And then through March, after the accident, was it? Did they continue to pay about two thousand dollars until March? Yeah. Okay. And then you heard Ms. Stout talk about the the Cobra being not available. Do you have any information about that? Whether it is or isn't? I have no idea whether it's available or not. And I do have a question on. What uh, she was talking about, uh, she just talked about it, about. Uh, she talked about taxes, VA, talked about the FERS. Well, uh, the FERS, taxes how do I, you were, you just explained it to him. Yeah. Again, I, just, I lost, I don't know what you're talking about. You mean my comment about. Uh, you making the interim payment of 50% of the gross first pension to Janet? Yeah. So do you, have a, do you have a question about that? Yeah, I have no problem with paying 50%, but what, uh, what are you talking about the interim? Just until, until the court order is accepted by the federal government and so one day you'll see your deposit is the 
or your gross amount is at 2300 and then next month you'll see it at 1150 and then and then you would no longer need to make those interim payments to Janet but until the federal government accepts the order you would need to pay Janet 50% of the gross amount of the first pension because you're going to continue to receive it until the feds decide that they're going to accept Washington's order well why wouldn't that your honor why wouldn't that be in the uh, spousal support are you saying in addition to? Yes. No. <laughs> so, so to clarify, the the, the, the the spousal support, the FERS, you know, if the court were to order something, the court orders the, the co-op or that order that says federal government divide up the FERS pension. Now, um, until that time, the, the request from Ms. Stout is that that would be, that you would pay 50% of that amount, you know, assuming that the court would order that the FERS would pension when it's actually paid out, the government would divide it 50-50, roughly. So until that time, then that 50% would go to you and 50% would go to Ms. Stout. Now, your question is what with the related to that? Well, if I'm having to pay half Social Security, half FERS, and half BGE, that should be the end of it. And in your calculations, what's half the PERS, what's half the Social Security, and what's half the PG? What's the total come up to there, roughly? Just about 1900 bucks. Okay. And you're, so you, right now with your, with your, all of your income sources, what's, what's your gross amount and what's your rough, roughly net amount that you get each month? Oh, I get about, um, I have about four hundred dollars to play with. I have uh, about four thousand dollars, forty-seven hundred dollars, and then I have to pay two hundred dollars insurance. That leaves forty-five. Healthcare six fifty. That leaves thirty-eight fifty. Uh, Janet, um, 1950, uh, and then phone, 100 bucks. So 1850, gas, 100. Uh, with, uh, and then taxes, which I, I have $100 basically out of every, every check. That's why there was only like three thousand dollars total taxes that I paid, but I owed nine thousand something. So, um, and like I have twelve thousand dollars dental, uh, I have to look at uh, uh, <laughs> burial expenses that I'm going to be paying for. Um, The cars that uh, are, that was another thing. Even though they're saying, well, I get the Forerunner and the Corolla, you're looking at a 98 and a 2005. And they've been sitting for several, well, I, I don't even, I haven't seen Forerunner for a year now, even physically seen it. And uh, one of the reasons that we bought a uh, Janet new car is the amount of money that you'd have to invest. So I ask you to take a look at the price that they put on these cars, the value. Uh, it's a little high. But I have about $400 uh play with every month can you break down the 4700 for me you said you got about 4700 in income Where's, can you just break those down, break that down for me the, from the income sources sure uh, the 4700 dollars that you get each month can you break down for me where those come from how much is coming from FERS how much is coming from social security how much is coming from PGE just I want to get your view on that make sure we're on the same page 
she's done that so well. So you're comfortable with the numbers that she's Ms. McLean's provided? Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay. Whatever is in the uh, uh, bank statement would be closer. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Either party have additional information you want to share with me that would help help clarify your positions or make clear what you what you're wanting. I don't think so. Okay, Mr. Stout. I'm. I'm at your mercy, sir. <laughs> you know whatever you decide, sir. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate the the parties, just the manner in which you conducted yourselves, and just providing the information that you have and sharing. Uh, what you feel is fair and, and equitable. Um, you know, last week I, I reviewed uh, the case and I reviewed the, the submissions for today. Um, I always, it's always kind of difficult. I, I, I review that kind of in a vacuum and it's nice to hear the parties here today to share your perspectives. So that adds a little more uh, detail and understanding for me that helps me to go back to those same records and start crunching numbers and looking at things. And so I'm, I'm not ready to give you a decision right now. Um, I want to uh, consider my notes that I've taken and consider what you've shared with me today. And then uh, I have this afternoon, uh, pretty much most of the afternoon I have uh, that I can dedicate to this. Um, if I don't get it done today, I think I can have it done by Friday the 14th at the latest. I've got a couple afternoons or at least one afternoon where I can accomplish the, the work I think I need to do. So if I, if I, if I don't get it out to y'all today, then I, I'll have it out to you by Friday the 14th at close of business. Uh, my decision will be a letter decision. In that letter decision, I'll, I'll lay out best I can all the details. Uh, I may miss some. And then if that's the case, in that letter decision that I send out on Friday, I'll, I'll, I'll have a date for a presentation, what we call a presentation order. Um, and so we'll come back on that date. And if you have any particular concerns, like, hey, the judge missed this or he messed up on that, that's the time where you'd come in and say, hey, um, I think I've got some disagreement with what the courts come up with, and then we can take a look at those, uh, finalizing everything and make sure all the details are, are clear and correct. Likely what will happen is that I'll, I'll, I'll draft that letter, um, and then I'm making an assumption here, but past practice informs future behavior. Uh, Ms. McLean would likely prepare uh, orders that kind of parallel in the detail that I provide in the letter and decision. And then she would likely forward those to Mr. Stout for his review. So he would have my letter, Ms. Uh, McLean's interpretation of that letter, and then we'd be back on that presentation date. So everybody can say, hey, this looks good, or this doesn't look good, and here's why. So that's kind of the next step. Do you want unavailable dates? Yeah. So are we looking at August, or are you considering delaying until September to allow her to get through her surgery? Um, I, Mr. Stout, you know, the sense I got from you, is that when you're talking about the healthcare coverage, recognizing Ms. Stout needs that surgery for her eyes um, happening in August, um, and then having that coverage be there in no uncertain terms, it's gonna be covered. Um, any concerns that if we were to, if I were to set the presentation date to sometime in September, do you have any concerns with that? No. Okay. So we could look at maybe first or second week. I'm, I'm actually both the first and the second would be, or the eighth would be fine too. Okay, so we, so it'll be within the first two weeks of, of September, either on a Friday or on a Tuesday. Okay. Okay, okay great. All Thank right. you. So exhibit one and exhibit two, those are the two documents that Mr. Stout handed to me. Um, any any objection to those being admitted? No. no. Okay, they're admitted. All right, with that, I think that was the last housekeeping item. Um, I'll double check with the parties if any final items that you uh, may have forgotten and want to address now or anything, Ms. McLean. No, thank you. Okay, Mr. Stout, any additional items? Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry to get health care problems, but I have my own. You know, I did have back surgery uh, to take out the cyst. And of course, I got uh, staph infection. They cut out part of the spinal muscle. So I'm limited on. What I can do. <laughs> sure. Plus, then I broke my back, and uh, I only have four more surgeries. I've had four surgeries since she left, and I have four more. So, 
you know, I'm kind of hot between a rock and hard to slide also. All right. Well, well thank you. Thank you to, to all parties. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Your Honor. We'll, we'll adjourn and then I'll, we'll get that letter out to you by, by this Friday. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.